TVU 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Adam Seibel. This is a severe weather alert from the... All right, we're going to go ahead and check in with meteorologist Howie Gordon because it looks like we've got some severe weather. So, Howie, how's it looking out there? Thanks, Adam. Well, what we had today, a lot of heating from the sun, that energy still prevalent. And then we have see, uh, the boundary coming down, meeting up with the sea breeze that collides, that creates lift. So with that energy, yes, we could see some severe thunderstorms. We're seeing a lot of cancellations in some of these events. But yeah, we got some heavy rain as this boundary continues to push through the area. Now, after this boundary does move through the area, then we're going to see the winds pick up. We could see 35 40 mile per hour winds that won't probably digress until maybe Sunday evening into Sunday night. But for now, as this boundary pushes through, yeah, we got some areas potentially bringing some severe storms. So we're going to continue to monitor this until this boundary clears the area a couple hours from now. Temperature wise, that cooler air is going to move in. Temperature is going to fall. We hit the 90s today. We're going to struggle in the mid to upper 70s for tomorrow. Now, wind's not too bad right now, but after this boundary clears the area, I'm expecting cooler air to usher down. We can see again 35 to 40 mile per hour winds so overnight down to 59. Again, I'm going to keep an eye on severe weather and severe thunderstorms. We'll talk more about it coming up in just a bit, Adam. All right. Thanks, Howie. A man and woman have died in a mobile home fire that happened around 6.30 a.m. Friday morning in Port O'Connor at 708 West Jefferson. The man, Charlie Johnson, was found between rooms in an older mobile home, and the woman, Sharon Lynn Holcomb, was found on the side of a bed and was taken to a hospital where she later passed away. Both victims are suspected to have succumbed to smoke inhalation, and there's no sign of foul play. The fire started in the kitchen and was a grease fire. A neighbor saw smoke and called 911 with the Port O'Connor Fire Department responding. A Calhoun County deputy entered the house with the Port O'Connor Fire personnel to attempt to rescue the two people inside. The presiding judge did order an autopsy on both Johnson and Holcomb. We now hear a legislative session update from Sunrise anchor Carolina Estrain and a Texas Tribune Capitol reporter. It's been a busy legislative session. We hear from Renzo Downey. He's a Capitol reporter with the Texas Tribune about the latest. Welcome, Renzo. Hey, thanks for having me. So our very own Lois Kolkhorst, our state senator, she was leading the charge for a mental health bill, Senate Bill 26. What was the result? Yes, yeah, so that bill passed the Senate unanimously on Thursday, and that bill uh, you can do a lot of things regarding mental health. It's going to put forward uh, 15 million for this innovation grant, and it's also trying to do a 10-year, like every 10-year audit for uh, local mental health facilities, and it's also uh, trying to move people out of the psychiatric facilities that the state has and move them into more long-term solutions, nursing homes. Um, it's all part of an effort to tackle the, uh, the state's mental health system. Texas definitely struggles with mental health care compared to states are across the country, so it's great to see some bipartisan action on this bill. I hear both Democrats and Republicans were, were on the same page on this. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, the bill passed unanimously. However, uh, there, there's been some amendments that we're trying to get on that bill uh, that weren't successful, but overall, that package passed unanimously. And what can we expect as far as the budget bill? Where is it um, right now? Yeah, so the Senate um, is getting ready to pick up the House's budget bill, which uh, was passed two weeks ago. Uh, and last week, the major point of contention was uh, property taxes. And you had the House passing its version of property taxes after the lieutenant governor, who runs the Senate, uh, he came out and said, you know, it's basically a non-starter with him what the House is trying to do. He, he was pushing that before they voted on it after they voted on it, and the House is you know, holding their ground on it. Um, the lieutenant governor said we sent a message, and the uh, House Speaker said the same thing. So it's going to be real interesting to see how they sort out their differences there. 
quite a showdown at the Capitol. Thank you so much, Renzo, for, for filling us in, and thank you for doing what you do. Oh, thank you. All right, back to you. A wreck around 3 p.m. this afternoon, a truck and SUV crashed, sending the SUV into a parked car, which then damaged the two cars next to it. This happening in the 9100 block of North Navarro, and no one was hurt. The clock is ticking. That's because today is National Tax Day. Tax Day is a day on which individuals' income tax returns are due to the federal government. But if you haven't finished your federal return yet, or even started, don't worry, you actually get a few extra days this year. The federal tax deadline has been extended this year to Tuesday, April 18th at midnight. That's because April 15th, well, fell on a Saturday, and because Emancipation Day is a holiday in Washington, D.C., that's observed Monday. And if you can't make that April 18th tax deadline this year, you should file an extension. So here's your viewer poll this evening. You can scan this QR code on your screen to vote now. So that question is, have you filed your taxes? Yes or no? Let's take a look at these results here. It looks like 79% of you say yes and 21% say no. So for those of you that have, haven't, remember it's okay. You still have some time. Just make sure you get it done in the coming days. All right, thank you for voting. Remember, come to CrossroadsToday.com slash vote to participate. As the national debate over abortion continues, the Supreme Court stepping in, issuing an administrative stay to keep the abortion drug Mifepristone available. The court now has until April 20th to decide its next steps. The outcome of this case could impact the FDA's drug approval process. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito issuing an administrative stay of the Texas ruling that would have overturned the FDA's original approval of the drug Mifepristone, a drug used in more than half of abortions in the U.S. It's good news for the patients that are going to be seen tomorrow, um, but it is far from over. The court now has until April 20th to review the case before deciding their next steps. We hope that the Supreme Court throws this case out. It is meritless um, and it's undermining the FDA's authority. Both the FDA and the drug manufacturer requested this stay. The outcome of this case could have far reaching implications. Not just access to the most commonly used uh, medication in terminating early pregnancies, mefepristone, but actually, you know, the FDA's drug approval process more broadly. This manufacturer says at issue here is federal judges second guessing the scientific judgment of the experts at the FDA. Anti-abortion group Alliance Defending Freedom filed the original lawsuit in Texas. We're confident again that the, when the courts with any court looks at the fact the facts and the law of this case, they're going to agree with us. So this is just the next step in a long, lengthy litigation. In a statement, the White House says that the stakes could not be higher and that for now, Bifepristone remains available and approved for safe and effective use. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. An 18-year-old El Campo high school student accused of recording children and adults in bathrooms and changing areas now indicted on 23 charges. The Wharton Journal Spectator reports Jalen Hawkins faces 19 counts of making an invasive video recording and four counts of possession of child pornography. And new information in a raid at a CJ's Mini Mart in Goliad late last month. Authorities seizing five eight liners and $4,500 in cash. The investigation started in May of 2022. Authorities later addressed the arrested the owner. He's identified as 27-year-old Chiran G.V. Oli from Victoria. All right, grab your cell phone and scan this QR code. This is our quick response code to download the Crossroads Today app. You can watch us anytime, anywhere, and get breaking news alerts and vote in our viewer polls. You can learn all about our ongoing contest right there on the app. You can also submit news tips and photos. Stay with us. Coming up, a 72-year-old Florida man lost his leg in an alligator attack this weekend. We're keeping an eye on these storms after the storms move. Cooler, dry, sinking air moves down as well as some winds. We'll talk more about it coming up in just a bit. Nobody can resist a DQ cone, especially when they're just $1. And nobody but DQ makes a treat this perfect. Is it the creamy smoothness of our soft serve? The iconic curl on top? The tempting crunch of the chocolate shell or the crispy cone? Yes, it's all that. Stop by every day through April 16th for the treat that's simply irresistible. Just $1 for a small, including the new churro dipped cone. DQ, that's what I like about 
our fist roam in these woods. And if you listen, you can hear it. Every now and then, you get a glimpse of it. Grandpa telling his stories again. The 2023 Toyota Tundra. Toyota, let's go places. In Texas, the future belongs to everyone. So we created the truck of the future for everyone. Ford F-150, part of America's best-selling trucks for 46 straight years. With an available 12-inch touchscreen and interior work surface, it puts the world at your fingertips. And now, there's a great in-stock selection to choose from at your best in Texas Ford dealer. Drive F-150 now with 0% financing plus 1,000 cash plus up to 1,000 accessories cash plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. Both sides interested in the Luther Hotel attended a virtual hearing and now they're preparing for an in-person hearing which is set for June 22nd. The Palacios Preservation Association has raised close to $3,000 to save the Luther Hotel from demolition. An online petition has more than 3,000 signatures to save the National Registered Site. They're now asking a judge to give them clearance to go inside the Luther Hotel. They say the demolition company has already removed contents from the hotel. The association says the Luther is well built, sturdy and restorable, and the owner wanted the hotel preserved. The historic landmark risk demolition from the Ed Rochelle Foundation after the estate of deceased owner Jack Finley attempted to sell the property. The community will have another opportunity to learn more about Victoria College's May 6th bond election. Voters will decide a $10 million bond issue to help with a $36.5 million project for a student success center. Victoria College already has $26.5 million in grants, gifts, and institutional funds for the project. The college is hosting its second bond informational session next Tuesday, April 18th at the Student Center. It's located at 2200 East Red River Street. The bond election is Saturday, May 6th, and early voting does begin April 24th and runs through May 2nd. So here's how the bond would impact a homeowner with a $100,000 home. You would pay $2.10 per year for three years. In 2027, due to voter approved bond debt that will be paid off, homeowners would pay $5.80 less in 2027. Homeowners over the age of 65 and residents with disabilities who filed for homestead tax exemption would not see a tax rate increase. After historic flooding hit Fort Lauderdale, Florida, crews and residents are coming together to start the cleanup process. Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency for Broward County on Thursday and Wednesday's storm resulted in more than 25 inches of rain drenching and flooding Fort Lauderdale in six to eight hours. The record breaking storm damaged critical infrastructure, flooded homes and vehicles and shut down the city's airport. Residents are now beginning the first steps of recovery by cleaning up in the aftermath. Government officials have urged residents to stay off the roads and about 600 people have been taken to shelters. However, no deaths have been reported. Today marks the 10th anniversary of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings that killed three spectators and wounded 260 others. This morning there was a wreath laying ceremony for the families who lost loved ones. Church bells rang and a special emblem, a one Boston Day marker was unveiled, paying tribute to the 10th anniversary of the bombings. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida was evacuated today after someone threw an explosive device in his direction while he was campaigning in western Japan. This happened at a fishing port in Wakayama City where the Prime Minister was scheduled to make a speech. Japan's Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno said police seized a man who threw a suspicious object towards Kishida. Video from the event shows the explosion go off while the man is on the ground. Kishida was escorted away safely and no other injuries were reported. Matsudo said the 24-year-old suspect was arrested on charges of obstruction and business by force. Meanwhile, Kishida was set to continue his Saturday afternoon campaign schedule. A 72-year-old Florida man lost his leg in an alligator attack Friday. The man's leg was amputated below his right knee as he was airlifted to a local trauma center. The alligator remained at the scene swimming in the nearby canal with the man's foot in its mouth. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commissioner officers and Brevard County Sheriff's deputies fired shots at the gator before pulling the reptile on shore. Wow, so yeah, we're dealing with a boundary coming through the area. We're looking potentially at some severe storms. We're keeping an eye on them. Then the winds will pick up and then cooler air moves into the crossroads. 
We'll talk all about it straight ahead. Victoria All Sports, South Texas' largest family-owned sporting goods store. Having served Victoria and surrounding counties since 1971, we're proud to continue to meet your firearms, hunting, fishing, camping, and outdoor apparel needs. Our friendly and knowledgeable outdoor experts can help you pick the perfect equipment for your next outdoor excursion and that our in-house gunsmith services are available long after your purchase. Come get geared up at Victoria All Sport, located at 1902 Houston Highway, right here in Victoria. On Saturday, March 18th at 9.40 p.m., officers with the Victoria Police Department responded to a call of shots fired on the 3600 block of East Forest Street. They located a 32-year-old man who had been shot. Witnesses advised that after the shooting, the suspect fled in a dark-colored truck. If you have any information about this assault, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. All tips are anonymous. If you give information that leads to arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. Texas? Now's the time to gear up and save on a new Ford SUV. Get great deals on our most capable lineup. Now with a great in-stock selection to choose from, like the spacious and tech-savvy Ford Expedition or Ford Explorer and Bronco Sport. Ford SUVs, number one in brand loyalty. Drive Escape now with 0% financing plus 1,000 cash, plus up to 500 accessories cash, plus complimentary maintenance. Ford is the best in Texas. All right, we'll start off in Cuero. We can't see the blue skies or the sun, but hey, clouds have moved into the area due to a boundary. We'll get there in half a second because earlier today, 93 degrees. Going to feel a little bit different tomorrow. Temperatures aren't going to be as warm and the winds will be picking up. 81 is where we should be back in 1914, up to 98 degrees. So still a severe thunderstorm watch. You see it get cut in half because that boundary now is pulling down across the area from out of the northwest, uh, moving its way, making its way towards the coast. Here's what we got. Watches and warnings with our radar. So you see the boundary now making its way halfway through the crossroads. You're seeing some heavy precipitation. What we had, we had the sun destabilizing the atmosphere today. Moisture moving in with the boundary. Moisture moving in along the sea breeze. And that collision with the boundary and the sea breeze creating a little lift. And that lift is a little bit of forcing that's helping with the rain, even though really they're very widely scattered. We're not seeing rain everywhere. But what is going to happen after this boundary does push through, eventually cooler air and those winds are going to pick up as that cool air kind of ushers down from the north. But we're going to keep an eye on these storms. Some of them weakening, but some still holding serve. We'll keep an eye on what's uh, we'll keep an eye on what's going on and we'll give you the latest with what's taking place with this boundary and these storms. Future temperatures, cooler air are going to start moving in behind this boundary. We made it to 93 today. We're going to struggle to get out of the 70s tomorrow overnight, dropping down into the 50s in some spots. Now, we will start to warm up later on in the week, but this latest boundary is going to knock down our dew point temperatures as well as our temperatures. We're going to go below average after being many days above average temperature wise. All right, let's go to our dew points. So what happened with our or we'll go to our watches and warnings again really quick. Here's what we got. Here's that boundary So it's making its way through the area. We're keeping an eye on some of these storms. Still only about a 30 percent chance we see rain in some locations and we're going to keep an eye though on the severe weather because that is what we're looking for. Winds will pick up after this boundary pushes through the area. And then again, that cooler air are going to move down and that will start to drop our temps. Now these dew points, we were 77, 75 across the board, a little bit different now. Temperatures starting to come down, our dew points starting to come down as this moisture gets ringed out from the boundary. Going to push through the area, sink cool, sinking dry air, really going to change things up on us. So yeah, we're not going to be as hot and hazy and humid and we're going to be on the cooler side, but we're going to be on the breezy side. At the moment, wind's not too bad. When the boundary clears the area, though, that'll open the door for that cool air to start ushering down from the north, northwest. And again, we could see winds in that 35, maybe 40 mile per hour range, not tapering down or weakening maybe until Sunday evening or into Sunday night. All right, here's the boundary I talked about. Bringing storms along the around, along the front, creating that lift. That boundary is going to push through. Winds will pick up. The cooler air moves down. We'll start to see some sun for a couple of days. Now the high will start moving off. That's going to allow storms to push in from the east by Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday. That could bring us some showers. But then as the high completely moves off, we'll start to see that warm air push up out of the southeast. We'll start to see more moisture. And again, 
warmer temperatures here in the crossroads. All right, here's our future tracker along the boundary. Yeah, we can see those showers as they push out of the area, but then, hey, dry times until that storm pushes in from the east, maybe Monday and into Tuesday, and eventually more moisture will move in. We'll see some clouds later on in the week. Here's what we got for our marine forecast. 71 for the water, but occasionally seas around 8 feet with winds gusting to 40 knots. They'll start to taper off, though, later on in the day. Overnight down to 59 degrees. Again, we're keeping an eye on this stormy activity. And then for tomorrow, just 76, but we'll be very much on the breezy side. Looking ahead for the rest of the week, here is what we got. 77 by Monday with lots of sun. Later in the week, look at that, mid 80s by Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. And then we have another cool down coming up Friday and into Saturday. For more weather, news, and sports, you can go to our app. That's at crossroadstoday.com. That is free for any Android and iPhone. All right, that's it for weather for now. We're going to go to sports with Zach. Howie, thank you. Lots of local scores to get to. I'll have that coming up in sports. Hi, folks. Greg at Full of Pep. A longtime customer talked to me the other day and told me they switched to a horse feed from another company because it was cheaper than ours. Before long, the shape of his horses deteriorated and one ended up at the vet. Our equine feeds are formulated to keep your horses in the best condition and maintain peak performance at any life stage. We're not the cheapest, but we sell a superior quality product at a fair price. And in my opinion, that's value. Come see us at Full of Pet. We know you always buy everything your family needs like the best cuts from our meat market, a bakery with fresh goods baked daily. We are here to assist you. And you can grab fresh tacos. Supermercado Morelos, live the tradition. I'm Charles Fisher of Fisher's Auto Sales. When you make a big purchase, doing your homework is very important. Invest some time finding the right vehicle at the right dealership. You want a dealership that takes pride in the vehicles they sell and offers quality, not quantity, for their customers' hard-earned money. It's a good idea to buy from someone that offers service after the sale and takes care of their customers like Fisher's Auto Sales. Our family has been taking care of Crossroads families for 20 years now, and we plan on being here another 20 years too. <laughs> Good evening, Crossroads. Huge games in Shiner last night, starting with the Comanches and Maiden. Shiner only one hit all game, but it was a homer leading one to nothing going into the final inning. The Maidens had plenty of hits, but nothing to show for it. They would walk, work a walk to get on base, and a pass ball puts a runner in scoring position, but Shiner pitching did a fantastic job all night, stranding base runners, and did just that to escape with the win. The hero with the lone hit was Peyton Vincic. Here's what she had to say. It was pretty tough. We, I've seen her the last two years, and I mean, I just wanted to grind off of that. Uh, this year, I was waiting for the changeup. I knew it was coming, changeup rise ball, and I was just waiting for the fastball down the middle inside to take it out. Shiner now in second, right behind Weimer. Across the sidewalk, the boys playing Ganeda was well, got masterful pitching all night long to go along with great offense, which is always a winning combination. Shiner would put up 10 in the win. The Ganeda boys had uh, some highlights as well, nailing a base runner, trying to take second, but that would be about it as they fell to score in the game. Right up the road in Yoakum, the Lady Bulldogs welcomed the Columbus Cardinals, who scored early and often, winning 11 to nothing. Yoakum falls to 2 and 7 in district play and sit just ahead of Palacios, and that's a huge win for Columbus because they are trying to keep up with the Hallettsville Bramas, who just keep winning. They take home a 13 to 1 win over Rice Consolidated to improve to 9 and 1 in district play. Hallettsville gets Tidehaven up next, and over on the Victoria East side of things, they had a shot to go to the postseason, but they just couldn't quite pull out the win yesterday in Corpus as they fall to race 7-2-1. Senior day for the Jags at Riverside. The Jags jumped all over L LCU in the first inning of game two, putting up four runs, but it went downhill after that as LCU would come back and put up 14 on the board. The Jags look to bounce back tomorrow. They get an 11 a.m. first pitch as they try to salvage a game from the series. It's also their last home game. 
In-state rivalry with the Rangers down in Houston. After losing game one, the Astros bounce back this afternoon, winning 8-2. Alvarez, three RBIs. And on the mound for the Rangers, University of Oklahoma product John Gray, who was hit in the arm with a 109-mile-an-hour line drive, is being called a forearm bruise. He'd have to exit early. And earlier this afternoon, the West Warriors softball team got the win as well. Adam, back to you. All right, thanks, Zach. Coming up, an escaped emu takes its owner and police on a 20-mile chase in Tennessee. You will now be singing for America's vote. The top 26 take the stage from Disney's Aulani Resort. And the performances are... Crazy! Crazy! Crazy? Talented. American Idol, new tonight and tomorrow on ABC. When you don't keep your eyes on what you're doing, it can be downright dangerous to you and others. Especially when you're behind the wheel. Put your phone down. Heads up, Texas. Key Victoria Beautiful is having a cleanup for Earth Day. April 22nd, that morning, we're going to go clean up all around Victoria. Make this place we call home just a little bit nicer. Last time we had 400 of your friends, neighbors, high school baseball players, teachers, nurses there to help clean up. Go to keyvictoriabeautiful.org to sign up and learn more. Bring a team. It's going to be a great Saturday morning. Look forward to seeing you there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. USA Foundation Repair, in conjunction with 25 News Now, brings you our Pledge of Allegiance every weekday morning. It's your time to reflect and celebrate our greatness as a country, to be a patriot, and to give thanks for living in the best country in the world. And it all began when you recite our pledge. Brought to you by USA Foundation Repair and 25 News Now. We want to invite you to experience our new digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. And on your cell phone, just search Crossroads Today Plus. A citywide manhunt and a police chase down the main street for an emu named Mimu. Social media sites filled, the locals, filled with locals describing what they had witnessed, a local man's pet emu who escaped and prompted a slow speed police chase to capture that giant bird. They eventually caught him and upon returning to his enclosure, the owner said Mimu immediately returned to his nest to care for his eggs. Mimu and his partner Mimi are caring for multiple eggs, meaning that a new generation of emus might be antagonizing police there soon. Oh, look at that picture. That's pretty cute. But I don't know. Emus might be dangerous. I'm not sure. But we have one last look at Weather with Howie. Howie, can we expect some storms or maybe an emu running down the street? 20 miles? Those, those birds are in some good shape there, Adam. I don't know. I don't think I can make it 20 miles. I guess the cars made it 20 miles. Yeah, we're still looking at this line of thunderstorms here. Now, look, some of it looks to be weakening and tapering off. I'll keep an eye on it in case there's enough energy to keep them going. But as the boundary gets closer to the shore, out into the open waters, yeah, we're going to be clear from these storms. But then winds will pick up and cooler air will start moving down into the crossroads. We hit 93 today. We're going to be maybe mid to upper 70s for tomorrow. So 59 overnight. Again, we'll keep an eye on these storms as that boundary continues to move its way through the crossroads and out into the open water. So uh, this will be for tomorrow, 76 degrees. Winds gusting to about 35 miles per hour. Then looking ahead here is what we have. So Sunday, a lot of sun after that boundary clears the area. Monday, 77 and sunny. Then by Tuesday, we have some mini storms moving to the area. And then we'll also have Gulf moisture and warm air push in. We'll start to warm up. Look at that by Thursday, 84, 83 on Friday. Another boundary cools us down, though, a week from now. Adam? All right. Thanks, Howie. And thank you for being with us. Remember, we're streaming 24-7 on CrossroadsToday.com. Have a good night.